Well, hello. Now live on my channel. I just got a message that Maximalist Minibus is now live on my channel. I'm going to give myself a thumbs up because why not, right? No, I don't think I can. Hi, I'm here. Um, looks like a couple of people are here, but nobody's in the chat. Hey, there's Bruce. Um, so some people really hate it when people like do the, you know, they do the roll call. They say, hey, so-and-so's in the chat. Hey, so-and-so's in the chat. So it's good there's not a lot of you here because then I don't have to do a big roll call. But uh, but I am happy to see. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to see you guys. Um, oh, my goodness. We just jumped up to seven people. Um, I hope if you're here that you'll say hi in the chat. Hey. Hey. Hi. Some of you are. Whoa. We got a couple of OG chatters here people that were here i used to do a um live chat every week every tuesday night and what a blast that was but um hey how are you doing joan i'm glad you're here um but yeah we would just kind of shoot the i guess i'm not supposed to swear on youtube am i we, we would talk we would just chat and say whatever we felt like saying and um uh, I decided I got to try to make these things a little more thematic so they have a little bit of a life outside of the the original chat where we're sitting here. But if anybody does have any questions or want to say anything, um, you can pop that in the um, in the chat there. And uh, but hey, I'm good, G Gabby. Well, thank you. I feel Susie's here. Yay. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are here. Um yeah, we got Nancy, we got Vincent RV Life, which is Bruce. I don't, I, we have Rosie. Hi, Rosie. Stacy. Hi, Stacy. We have Joan. I've known Joan a really long time. Um, Gabby. And Susie. Okay, that's, and Captain's good. Captain's right here. He's finally chilled out. He's had a very, Captain's had a very neurotic day. He's just been like super clingy and just just a pain in the ass frankly um whoa thank you nancy thank you wow that's awesome um hi donna oh you're in mass too awesome and deborah i'm in the bus i'm not on the road yet i'm still in massachusetts which is why i'm going to talk about boondocking here in massachusetts but i'll be uh i'm leaving um about a week and a half i'll be on the road i just had some stuff i wanted to get done like for example and it's kind of pointless now. I'm not going to need it for a while, but I just had air conditioning installed on the bus. And, um, Hey, Reverend RV. Hi from between Georgia. What is between a place? Or are you just between places? Um, hoop alive. Hey, Hey, Oh, hi. That must be hoop alive. Must be Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Um, yeah, so I'm still in Massachusetts. I'm getting some stuff done on the bus. It's taken us a while to settle stuff from my mom's estate. And then I'm also, like I said, in the um, if you guys are on the Facebook post, um, then, hey, Joan, you're in Quartzite? I'm not. Um, yeah, I'll be there eventually, but I'm not. It's going to be a while before I'm there. Um, I'd say probably January, maybe December, I'll be in Quartzite. No, actually, I'll be in Quartzite in, at, in, in December, probably. Between is a town. Okay, good. Thank you, Susie. I'm not loving the new hairdo, but the good thing about hair is that it grows. So it's not going to be this way forever. Um, but yeah, we've been selling my mom's estate. That has taken some time. And I wanted to get a, some upgrades done on the bus because there were some things. Uh, I, when I was out on the road for an extended period the last time, there were some things where I was like, mm, just not quite happy with. I just had to dial some things in. So I've been in a kind of a dialing in mode. And Captain really hates it when I use tools. Like not even, power tools is one thing, but if I use any tools, he gets really freaked out. So he's been freaked out all day because I've been working on the bus all day. And it's also been pouring, pouring, pouring rain, which I really, really hate. Um and oh, you're gonna stay for the tent sale? Okay, yeah, I, that, I sh some someday I'll do the tent sale, but not this year probably. I'm just kind of, you know, just kind of getting getting myself back in gear, pretty much. Um, and what else? What else is going on? Um, so uh, anyway, I wanted to talk about 
Boston because you hear all the time, oh no, there's no place to camp in Boston. You can't camp there at all. There's nothing, nothing, blah, blah, blah. And it's that's kind of true. Like there's not camping exactly, like where you can put out your slides and put up your awning and stuff. Um, there are a few places, but you gotta really plan ahead to get them because they're gonna fill up. Like every time I get it in my head, oh, I'm gonna go check out this state park that is camping or whatever. None of them are free. And when you go check them out, they're pretty much always booked. So uh, you kind of have to be a little bit more creative. At the end of this, by the way, I'm going to reveal my number one favorite place. And I'm on the fence about it because it's such a favorite place. I just don't want... Yeah, you guys will be good, though. You guys aren't going to be those, um, you know, those poor etiquette nomads who screw it up for everybody. Um, but there are a lot of people who are like, they'll say, by the way, I'm really nervous. I'm just going to say that up front because I haven't done a live stream in a really long time. And I have a haircut that I'm not nuts about. And what else? Ah, that's enough. That makes me nervous. Um, I'm getting my bearings. Exactly. Um, Donna, it's actually not that cold right now yet. It's really hovering somewhere around 50 where I am. I haven't had like super, super cold yet. Um, I have a diesel heater though, so in it cranks. So there's plenty of heat. Plus I've got really good blankets. Hi, Jolly Matilda is here. Yay. Um, thank you, Donna. I appreciate it. Um, so it's just us. That's right. It's just you guys. Um, so a lot of people will say when they're going to be look in a new city, they're going to boondock or whatever. People, you hear people tell the time, oh, don't stay any place where you're not officially allowed, right? And that is a nice policy, but I don't think you, you're you going to run out of places pretty quick around here if you don't get a little bit creative with that, you know? So I tend to adopt the, it's easier to ask, it's easier to get to, what's the words? It's easier to ask forgiveness than to get permission, something like that. Um, and I, you know, there are a lot of places, even there's places that actually have a, have signs that say no overnight parking that are completely cool with you parking there overnight. But a lot of places will have signs um, because it allows them to kick people out if they, it, it gets them off the hook, gets them, gets rid of a certain amount of liability and it gets them off. It, it allows them to kick people out if there's people there that they don't want. There actually were a lot more places where you could like straight up camp before COVID, but most of those places are gone now. So you're going to, what I tend to do is I spend my day in one place and my night in another, because there's a lot of beautiful places you can go hang out for the day, but almost all of those places have a gate that's going to lock, you know, and you're not going to be able to um, stay for the night. Um, a couple places you could actually probably get locked in and nobody would notice, but for the most part, you got to get out when they come to lock the gate. So uh, what I'll do is I'll spend my day someplace really pretty, someplace on the river or on you know at, near the ocean, and then go to a parking lot at night. And typically, oh whoa, thank you so much! You are so generous. Thank you very much. You guys are awesome. Um, that just threw me off completely. I wasn't expecting that. Thank you. Um, uh, Ocean State Job Lot has spend 30, get 40% on a crazy deal card. Yeah, I love Ocean State Job Lot, actually. I, I've gotten a lot of things there. Um, but the where I end up sleeping, a lot of times, the mo my go-to place is Home Depot. And I almost hate to say that because I don't want Home Depots to suddenly say, oh, we can't allow this and be overrun. But honestly, here, it's relatively easy because... Nobody expects there to be someone sleeping in that vehicle. There's so few nomads here. There's so few people. Boon it's not exactly a boondocking magnet, you know? So there's so few people that nobody looks at any vehicle and thinks, oh, there's probably somebody sleeping in there, even if it's an RV. But um, probably RVs get a little more attention, but not really that much. One of the places that I go to um, from time to time, there's a class A that's been in the parking lot like every night for weeks and weeks. And I actually think it's abandoned, which is really bad etiquette to abandon your RV in a parking lot. But I also would say, don't, you don't go any place two nights in a row. I go a lot of different places. One of the things I did uh, when I first got here, that's been really helpful is um, I just did a Google search for 
24 hour parks. And you find out what parks in the city or the surrounding towns are open 24 hours. And then you do Google satellite and you see if they have a parking lot. So it's fairly safe to say if a park is open 24 hours, no one's really going to give you a hard time for parking there overnight. Now, if you're literally there for 24 hours, that might call, cause a little more attention to come to you. But honestly, it's just not so much on the radar of people here. Hey, Crafty Traveler, who did I, have I missed anybody? Have I missed anybody? If I missed you, wave, because sorry, I didn't mean to miss anybody. Um, but there are a lot of places that are just open 24 hours. And if they're open 24 hours, like a park, um, you can probably stay there. A lot of times, though, a lot of times, if you're in a park in an urban area, Personally, I feel more safe in a parking lot because parks in urban areas are a whole other thing than like the forest or the, you know, or the desert. If you're in a park in the city of Boston and you're the only one there overnight and somebody else comes, you kind of go, who's that? Who's the other person? You know, it's, it's hard not to get suspicious when another person arrives. Yeah, I never heard that one before, Reverend, Reverend RV. I just keep on rolling, rolling down the, what is it? Anyway, I'm, Crafty Travel, you're going to Deerfield. Okay, that's cool. We got somebody else here from Deerfield. I'll let them tell you if they want to, that they're from Deerfield. Their uh, cracker barrels here are very limited. Although, once you get out toward Deerfield, you do find cracker barrels. Cracker barrels is my go-to on the road. Um, because I don't think they'll even sign a lease in a town that doesn't allow RVs. But a lot of the Walmarts now... You know, a lot of them don't let you uh, stay overnight at Walmart anymore. And a lot of that has to do with town ordinances. And again, you're going to see that more in places where there are a lot of nomads. Um, here, that's, you know, it's, uh, there's just not a lot of Walmarts. I mean, there's a Home Depot, like there are literally um, Home Depots. Mm, God, there's, there's probably one every five miles in Massachusetts. Susie, truck stops are generally good uh with i would i would issue a slight caution about loves which seem they're called loves they should be lovey um i have a video that'll be coming out about an experience i had at loves and um they uh loves always has signs up that says one hour parking or something but they never enforce it except when they want to and sometimes when they want to there's not really any rhyme or reason to why they want to um but yeah i mean i've the thing i tend to go to like when it's laundry day and shower day i go to a, i go to a truck stop um truck stops are very expensive for showers but there's always one there and i do have a shower but it's not the kind of thing certainly not here in suburban massachusetts um i can't really whip out my shower and take a shower on the sidewalk um so i do tend to go to places that have showers but again that's something to search because you would be surprised how many public showers there are in any given place like here for example i found um a bicycle a community bicycle space where you can go and has tools for you to work on your bicycle that has uh, showers and lockers and there's pools you know two bucks to get into the pool you can you can uh take a shower donna planet fitness i personally i'm not nuts about taking a shower in a gym because i feel very self-conscious about the fact that i'm probably not going to work out <laughs> you know i'm just going to go in and take my shower and i i haven't felt um I haven't, I had the membership for a while and I didn't find it to be the most welcoming place to go take a shower. And it, it's not cheap. If you're, you know, if you're going to take a shower, um, every day, right. Then you need a gym membership because where are you going to find a shower every day? But I don't take a shower every day. I'll be honest with you. And most of the people I know who travel don't take a shower every day. <laughs> Sorry. That's just the way it is. Um, Yes, I'm back. Hi. I'm doing pretty well. I'm I'm here, right? That's what matters. I'm here. Um, so I think I'm probably gonna just be sticking to live streams for a little while because I'm I, I have this, I'm a terrible multitasker. Absolutely terrible. 
I can't really do, uh, you know, a lot of things at the same time. I'm not, I, I can't, like I'm working on this project and I'm finding that if I try to do a video, it's just, I need to get this done. And it's been slow going um, for a number of reasons. And one of the reasons is that, you know, my heart is in making videos. That's what I do. That's what I really love to do. Um, so while I'm working on this writing project, I'm probably going to do live videos until I'm done or until I'm at a point where I feel like I, where, where I feel like I can multitask. Um, in terms of Deerfield, I think there's a Cracker Barrel pretty near Deer, Deerfield. Um, where did I stay at a Cracker Barrel? Brookfield, I think it was. Um, but there's definitely, there's definitely, and there's also a, um, there's also a, a what do you call it? A, um, some tr truck stop. I think it's a Flying J maybe or something that just opened in Deerfield or near Deerfield. So you won't have too much trouble there. Plus, there's also, um, if you're traveling on the Mass Pike, which, you know, it's a, it's a toll road. So you maybe don't want to get on there. But if you're on there, I've spent the night in the rest stops along the Mass Pike with really, you know, they're fine. They're perfectly fine. Um, if you want RV parks and stuff like that, it's it's going to be a little more tricky because, I mean, depending on when you're going to be there, because obviously everything's super seasonal around here and uh, expensive. You know, most of the places that you'll find to camp are expensive. And again, there are um, there are state parks that have inexpensive camping, but they're pretty full. The other day I was looking at one. I thought, oh, I think I'll check out this park. It was $34 a night, which is more than I'm really interested in paying to camp. Um, there is, there is, uh, a, there's a place in my hometown where somebody posted online that you could stay there overnight and I haven't tried it yet. So I'm not going to mention it, but they have, you go, you drive in and they've got these beautiful camps set up with picnic tables and, and, um, uh, you know, a uh, barbecue grill and all that stuff but they're not um they say they're called camps but they lock the place up at six o'clock at night well eight o'clock at night so it's kind of like i don't know if you could stay there if you if you stay there at night you're locked in till 10 a.m and the police do drive through right before they lock it up. I don't know if they're driving through to say, Hey, we're locking the door. If you want to stay, you can, or if they're driving through to say, you got to get out. So I haven't tried that place yet, but that, that's a great place. If it turns out that that is a legit um, overnight camping spot, it's super near to the city. So I will definitely do a video about that, but I got to confirm that first and make sure. Um, Bees knees. Will you show us the bus? Yes, I will, but not right now um, because I'm, Things are a little topsy turvy right now. I told you I was I um I just put in an air conditioner above. It's a window air conditioner, but I've just installed it through the wall above the back door, and I'm redoing that wall now and re-insulating that wall because I had a there's a big hole in it now with an air conditioner sticking through, and unfortunately I can't really test it out because in the process it's taken me so long to get around to doing this that now it's too cold. The air conditioner isn't going to cool unless it's at least 62 degrees outside, you know, ambient temperature or even in the bus. And it's typically not 62. It's less than 62 degrees. We're hovering in the 50s for the most part these days. Um, yeah, RV parks are wicked expensive here. And there's just not that many of them to begin with. Um, and yeah, they do cost extra for, re even for residents though, like that one that I was looking at, $34 for, was the resident price. I don't even know what the price was for non-residents. And that's a state park. Now you go right over the line into New Hampshire, you go to Maine and um, Nancy, Nancy knows more about these places than I do. Um, that That's... Uh, there's a lot more to, to do there. Yeah, there's a mailbox where you can send me mail. Um, what am I using for my mail? Yeah, it's, 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 I think it's on the video, in the description on the video, where you can send me mail. And it's supposed to be 68 tomorrow. Oh, I hope that's true. I thought it was going to rain all week. That's what I saw this morning. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of things I want to show you guys about the bus and a lot of... Um, I want to get back to doing sort of 
how-to videos, although you guys, if you've watched me for a while, you know that, like, part of the fun, if you want to call it that, of watching me do a how-to is that I don't typically know what I'm doing. And I I figure out how to do it anyway, but I don't typically know what I'm doing. So if you want those kind of videos where you just go, okay, I need to know how to do X, you just turn the video on and there it is all spelled out for you easy. I am not the one to watch. I will say that right off the bat because it takes me a while. I, I estimate that everything I do takes me seven times longer than I planned for it to take. That's pretty typical of me. Springfield has, yes, Springfield has a 24 hour casino. Um, and there's a, there's a casino, the Wynn Casino in Everett, Massachusetts, which also has a nice little, um, 24 hour park. I was talking about 24 hour parks. Um, I think it was part of the deal when they built the casino there that they had to provide 24 hour pedestrian access. So the pedestrian access goes through a park and that park is a place you can park, you can camp over I wouldn't call it camping, but you can sleep overnight there. Hey, it's past your bedtime. Come on. What's this with bedtimes? Hi. I'm so glad you're here. Oh, yeah. Scusted Beach. That's a nice, that's a nice campground. Did you really, the, uh, the installation process of what, the air conditioner? I haven't yet. Yeah, I've shot it. Well, I kind of shot it. Um, I was too chicken to cut the hole in the bus myself. And so I had Teddy, who's done some auto body work for me, do that. And he is not down with being videotaped for YouTube. So he took photos for me, though. And I will use that to make the video. And then I'll show you the other stuff that I'm doing. Hey, Kathy, it's OK. We're still here. Um, so I will definitely show you the the install. But um I'm not ready to do that yet. You know, there's, I still have, I mean, I, when I came back to Boston in July, when my mom got sick, um, I pretty much stopped editing videos. So I have videos from all across the country that I haven't even edited yet that I, from the traveling that I was doing before, before I came back here. So I'll probably do that. Okay, I see I get distracted. See, I told you I'm a terrible multitasker. Reverend Darby, riddle me this. You cannot keep me until you have given me. What am I? Hmm. I don't know. What are you? Um, Gabrielle, Mary, I love to do DIYs. Yeah, I have learned it. The things that I am not sure to do correctly, I hire it out. Yeah, that makes sense. I prefer a lot of times to plunge in myself and figure it out. Um, because that's just kind of, you know, that's just kind of how I roll. Oh, your word. Of course, your word. Um, uh, oh, as far as how I'm going to power the... No, the AC is going to be completely powered off of solar. Yep. So I want to talk about what AC I bought and all that stuff, but I don't want to give it all away. I you'll have to wait for the video for that. But um, yeah, it's going it, to, it'll work out fine. I had, had to install more solar to do it, but not so much that it's crazy. Um, and it's actually a lot of things are so, I remember when people used to tell me you can't have a microwave in a bus or a van or whatever. A microwave is, is not a big deal. And I'm sitting here right next to my microwave. Um, I don't use it a ton. And I thought about, do I even really still need a microwave? Um, and while I was trying to figure out, should I get rid of my microwave? I found this other microwave that had a different technology that was so cool. So I swapped microwaves. I have a video about that too. But, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things I want to show you guys. But like I said, I've got to do this other project first. And then once I've done that, pretty much... Almost the whole time that I've been making videos, I've had other things on the side that I had to focus on. Number one of which was my mom. And um, now that I'm at a point where I don't have other distractions, I want to really get serious about making videos. You know, get a little more, um, just a little more regular because I've been very inconsistent. And um, that's, 
just too much to do, you know, and too, too many other priorities, which I'm glad they were my priorities. I'm glad that I was able to be here for my mom and stuff like that. But now it's time to focus on some other things. And that's what I'm doing. Joan. Hi, Joan. Joan Laws is in the house. Um, Gabrielle, I did not keep the kerosene lamp. I loved that lamp, but it's very big. I mean, it's not big, but it's big by the standards of what I want in a bus. And and I and the I had to carry a giant jug of kerosene for it too. So it was kind of a two part project, and I just wanted to get a little more compressed, and you know, so I got rid of it. And it was sad to get rid of it. I love that thing. Um. Yeah, solar um, solar is so much less complicated than people think it is and so much less complicated than people want, make it out to be. A lot of times you ask the most simple question of people who really know and they'll say, oh, they'll give you this answer that might be very simple to them, but is just, they're just talking circles around the situation. It's very, very simple when you get right down to it. I mean... What could be simpler than energy from the sun? You know, it's not like we have to build the panels. If we had to build the panels, that might be a little more complicated. Um, Will Prowse has the best, most down-to-earth video about it um, that I would check out. But honestly, for me, I learned about solar by doing it. I'm not, I'm not great at absorbing things from other people's experiences. <laughs> you know, I, I do much better when I put my hands on something. And I've learned a lot about solar because I've been mucking around with solar a little bit at a time since, you know, since I got the bus and that's been four years now. So I feel like I'm pretty, I don't do it the way other people do though. And I'll do, I'm going to do a video about my solar setup. And to be honest, I've been a little afraid to do that because I really don't do it the way the big shots do, you know, the people, the people who, you see all the time in videos telling you how to do things. I don't do it that way <laughs> and I'm getting by just fine. And there's nothing, I don't do anything that's not safe, but I definitely have a different, a very different attitude about solar than a lot of people do. And it, it's very simplified. And you know, people will say to me, somebody said to me the other day, God, I'd love to build a bus, but I don't know anything about electric. You don't need to know anything about electric. You really don't. And I don't say that because I'm trying to encourage you to do things that are unsafe. I'm saying it because it's, it's, this isn't a house and you don't have to, you can, if you want to, you don't have to install outlets and put wiring inside of walls and under, you don't have to do that. It's, there are much simpler ways to light and heat a vehicle that you wouldn't necessarily do in a house. And I understand why some people want it to be a house, but I'm really comfortable with the idea that I live in a bus. So I'm willing to do things a little differently and it gets you on the road quicker. That's for damn sure. But Hey, Janet from Alabama. Wow. You're, you're here a ways. Um, I'll be heading. I don't know if I'll hit Alabama, but I'm going to be in the South fairly soon. Yeah, I'll be making my way across the south for the most part to the west. But um, I haven't spent a lot of time in Alabama, but I would like to. It's a. It seems like it's a pretty place. Go and go watching from Vermont. We have a couple of Vermonters, I think, here. Um, yeah, where all the yeah where all the history is. Oh, that you're talking to her. I thought you were talking about Alabama. Um, Old Deerfield. There's a whole, I love that there's conversations going on here. You guys talk some more. Talk some more. Um, anyway, um, yeah, in terms of, a, so you, you bring up Jackery, and I have to say, I have nothing against Jackery, but there are a million companies that make better products than Jackery. It's just that Jackery has the resources. P Jackery has come to mean uh, all in one power solution, the way that, um, uh, 
something like frigid air has come to mean refrigerator to some people. You know what I mean? It's, but it's a brand name. If you, if you can't afford a Jackery, there's a lot of other options for you that are not Jackery. And if a Jackery doesn't suit your needs, there's something else there that will nothing wrong with Jackery's Jackery's are great, but there's just a lot of other things. And, and you're absolutely right. Do your research and you have to not, um, there's this combat, there's this balance that you need to strike between learning from the wisdom of others and finding things on your own and saying, I wonder if that would work. And again, I, I would never encourage anybody to do anything that's not safe. That's where the line gets drawn, you know, but, um, but there's, there are things you can learn by mucking around with things that you're just not going to learn from someone else's experience. And you're going to find a lot of people will say that won't work to things that will probably work. Frankly, um, I wouldn't have a diesel heater if I had listened to people because I got my diesel heater back when they were very unusual in this country. People were using them in Europe, but you didn't have a lot of people using a diesel heater here. And I went on um, Facebook groups and forums to ask about them. And people were basically telling me that I was crazy and that my bus was going to explode if I used a diesel heater. And a diesel heater is the absolutely, in my opinion, best way to heat a vehicle, uh, even if you're even if it's not a diesel vehicle. Although I'm, I've heard that they will run some of them run on gas as well. They have the similar device for gas, but even it, running it on diesel, I mean, you can run a, a diesel heater even if you're not a diesel vehicle. And they are very good for vehicles because they don't have um, they don't you know, you're, you're not getting a lot of condensation. It's very, it's a, it's a dry burn and that you're not getting fumes because it's happening under outside of the vehicle. But anyway, you know, I just, uh, you, you have to look for solutions that work for you. And there's so much wisdom out there. And a lot of that wisdom is very, a, a lot of people are very stuck on what their own wisdom is. So that's why I encourage you to have a really good mix of like, here's the smart people who know what they're doing. And here's an idea that maybe no one else thought of yet. And don't assume because no one else is doing it, that it, it, that it doesn't work. You might be the first person who thought of it. Yeah. Diesel heaters are, are, are good. And it still amazes me when uh, the misinformation that's out there about a lot of things though. So it's, if you have a, um, questions that you want to throw to a group, like a Facebook group or something, just remember that a lot of the people in those groups are not actually, um, experts either. The, you, I, I made the assumption for a very long time that everybody knew more than me about everything. And I would assume that, everyone in the world knew more about solar than me, you know? And then I'd start talking to people who had solar and I'd say, well, how, how many watts do you got? And they go, I don't know. You know, what's your, what, how many amp hours of battery? I don't know. They don't know. They just know that what they have works and that's totally fine. It's just that it, my idea that they knew more than me was shattered by that. And I finally decided to just sort of accept that I know a few things. A Dickinson propane fireplace. Oh, I don't know a Dickinson propane fireplace. Um, are those those little ones that they use on boats? Um, but yeah, I mean, propane is sort of the go-to fuel for a lot of people. I have, I'm a big believer in redundancy when it comes to heat because I'm in Massachusetts. And I've got the diesel heater and I've also got um, a small butane like a space heater that runs on butane because i cook with butane and so it's just easier to only have one fuel um and a lot of people will tell you that butane doesn't burn in cold weather and i can tell you that that is not true because i cook on butane and i um use it as heat as a backup only if something goes wrong with the diesel heater or if i need you know if it's crazy cold i'll turn on every heat source i have i even have a little 400, I think it's 400 watt um, plug-in electric that I would only use in a really extreme situation. Thank you so much. Wow. Lunch for me in the pub. Woohoo. That is awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, this whole um, super chat thing, it's really interesting. Like I, I didn't even remember that that existed. I just wanted to talk to you guys because it's been so long. I love doing YouTube and I, hate that I've been away from it for so long, but again, you know, it's, uh, 
it's there's just too much to do in this world. And when my mom passed, I really was just sort of not, I was out of sorts. I wasn't really equipped to do much of anything at that point. And now I'm definitely feeling more gung ho, but I got to take things one thing at a time. One thing I do want to say though, is 29 people are here and only 13 thumbs. Give me some thumbs people. Um, I hate saying stuff like that. It's so YouTube-y. But, you know, you got to be youtube -y, apparently, because that's how it works. Hey, there's Zulma. There's Zulma over there. Hi. Captain says hello. Captain's snoozing right now, so he's not, uh, he's not, he doesn't, Captain hates to be on camera. If you point a camera at him, he will generally do anything he can to sabotage it. So I'm always really psyched when I get a, um, when I get a, a good picture of him. Um, anyway, what else can I say about, uh, since that is the theme of the evening, Boston boondocking. Um, okay. Let's, I learned solar starting with a 200 watt. That is exactly. Yeah. You start small, play around with it. And you learn, you learn what you need. You learn what it will do. I remember trying to power my laptop and lights and everything off of a 256 watt hour little box, you know, and I learned pretty quick that it didn't work, but I wasn't running any life support equipment. So it was okay. You know, that's how you learn. You do things and you figure out, oh yeah, that's not really enough. Um, and you learn. Hey, Gina's here. Don't worry about it. We're still here. Um, so, well, well, that's YouTube for you. Never got the notification. Um, yeah, if people want to chime in with solar products they recommend, go for it. I, I'm all, all about all in one units. I don't have individual batteries and my go-to is I've got, I've uh, my, my bus powered by Montec. Montec X1000, I think is the absolutely best product on the market. Um, but a lot of people prefer to build a system with batteries. I don't know too much about that stuff because I've never done it. I've just, I've always used all in ones. I'm uh, pretty good with understanding how solar works and how much power you need, but don't ask me to build a system because I don't know how. Um, but if people have suggestions, throw them in there. Yeah. Back in the eighties when you could boondock in Kenmore square, do you, if, okay. If you remember Kenmore square in the eighties, do you remember Mr. Butch? That is the question for Bostonians. Um, you have 1600 on the roof and 400. Wow. That's, you got a lot of solar there, Joan. 1600 on the roof. Uh, what, what's the breakdown? Are they 200 watt panels? What do you got? Um, you do, you remember Mr. Butch? Yeah. He was an interesting cat. Kenmore Square should be a very different place. You definitely cannot boondock there now. Two 30 watt panels on the roof and a goal zero 150. It works great for running CPAP and fan and lights. Yeah, see, there's, yes, two chickens. That was him. He with the guitar. He was a guitar player. Very cool guy. Um, okay, so that's a lot. You have a lot on the roof. And, um, but that's, you know, you do what you need to do. And then this, Eddie, that's my brother, Eddie, right there. He remembers Mr. Butch. Um, You'll see, like, okay, go Van Gogh, you have two 30-watt panels on the roof and a goal zero 150, and it works, right? It works for you. So there's not a right way and a wrong way to do any of this. You know, you, you do what works for you. The only thing that's the wrong way is unsafe, and that's what I, 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 I hate to be the one that harps on that, but I see this all the time where people are, um, you know, doing things that are just not... Um, that are not safe. You know, you don't want to start a fire. <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to get impaled by something. You don't want a refrigerator to fall on you. That's that. Those are things that need to be safe. But um, yeah, if the, you don't have a fridge and it's, it's, it, I'm interested that you can run a CPAP on that. A lot of people think that you need a massive amount of solar to run a CPAP. That hasn't been my experience. I mean, I don't run a ton of stuff. I have my computer. I have a refri Well, now I will. Now that I have an air conditioner, I'll be running a ton of what people think of as a ton of stuff. But I will be doing that with 800 watts on the roof. And uh, let's see. 
I don't, I don't do amp hours because watts are just easier for me. And two, 250 watts on the roof and <laughs> and 200 usable amp hours after two and a half years. Woohoo! It takes a while to dial it in sometimes. Yes, so Hobotech is a solar guru. Um, you have a 280 Jackery. You can get three nights. That's good. I will have when I'm after I'm done with my most recent in install, I'll have 800 watts on the on the roof. And that's because I put in the air conditioner. Right now I have 400 watts, but I'm doubling that um, because the air conditioner is a wild card for me. Um, you've been living with 100 all this time? Well, that's still, that's not bad for one person. That's not terrible. I mean, like I said, it's whatever works, you know, but it sounds like it maybe wasn't quite working. And now you'll have more and then it will work. Cool. Um, yeah. So just like I said, take in the wisdom, but don't assume that everybody knows more than you because you're the only person who knows how you live and you're the only person who can decide what's right for you. You know, I try not to. I have a couple of early videos that make me wince because I'm kind of saying like, this is how you do it. And God knows, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do anything. You know, I just kind of do it. So it, the combination of the wisdom of others and, and your own, your own ideas and, you know, your own sense of what works for you. Uh, 150 is small battery goes go zero made and without the solar panels it would run three nights before it needed to be recharged now with two panels we never run out of now i'm assuming though when you say that that you are in places with sun all the time or at least the vast majority of the time right if you're in a different area um i think you're gonna you know like where i am right now where it's rained for three days um you're probably going to find actually it hasn't rained for three days yet, but it's supposed to rain all this week. You're in Vermont. Oh, that's, Oh yeah. You did say you're in Vermont. That's pretty good. But again, you, you know, you're, you, you understand you, I'm assuming you calculated out what you needed and you got power that matched it, which I think is the best way to do it. You know, a lot of people just go huge because they can, and that's great if they can. Um, I am, I'm a fan of, I'm not a sim I'm not a fan of simplicity when it comes to my surroundings, as you can see by my my gold and my yellow fridge and all that. I like glitz, but I like really simple systems, you know, like foot pump sinks and things like that. Um, you went by what you could afford. Okay, that's yeah, what you can afford. That's a key, that's a key factor in all of this. Um, but I would have to say that I've learned more from trying various things and finding that they like I just well. I just had a I just had a revelation regarding toilets and I'm not going to go into it here but this is my third I'm on my third toilet and I this is the keeper and I'm going to make a video about this but I've already got two videos about toilets and about and I still don't have a composting toilet but uh yeah it took me a while to figure and and part of my coming to the what really works for me was re, was rejecting a big part of the story that everybody was telling me always about what was an absolute must. I let go of that must and my life got a lot simpler in that particular aspect of, of, of my, I will make a video about my toilet, but I don't want to give too much of it away right now because it's, it is a big revelation. It has changed my life. Um, and you'll find out about it eventually. Um, there are these things that are just this wisdom that people put forward is like, this is the way to do it. And a lot of times you discover that that's not quite the way to do it for you. A lot of times you discover like, it's great. It's a shorthand, you know, to be able to see what other people uh, are doing. Thank you. I love my Telever, my Televera sink too. I have to say it is not the most efficient um, situation. It's not a very deep sink. And I do sometimes regret um, not having, I have a, a, like a little, you know, sink that's, that's, uh, see, I'm just losing my, losing my mind today. Um, it, you know, it gets smaller. What do you call that? Collapsible. I have a collapsible sink. Um, and I end up pulling that out because my Talavera sink is not very deep. 
Um, so, but it's super cute and it's great for washing my hands and brushing my teeth and stuff like that. Um, I have another idea for a sink that I, if I find the right piece, I will replace that sink, but it has to be the exact right piece. And I know exactly what I want. And it, if that ever crosses my path, then the Talavera sink will be up for grabs and maybe I'll have a little contest and give it away because everybody loves that sink. Um, and I love it too. Don't get me wrong. I just think there might be another another one in my future. Yeah, and, you know, putting it in a vintage dresser, that's kind of a no-brainer for me um, because that's all I can afford is old vintage furniture. It does have a lot of care. That sink does have a lot of character. I get more comments on that sink. I think I've gotten more subscribers by having that sink than by pretty much anything else I've ever done. Let's see. What else? What else do you guys want to know? Um, and I'm, I keep returning to my original topic, my Boston boondocking, but I don't think a lot of you are going to be coming to Boston to boondock. Yeah, my fridge. This I love my fridge, too. It's cute. I still like it after all this time. I'm going to do an update video on that, too, and tell you the the very few, but the issues that I've had and the, and the, the way it's held up and all that, but I'm really happy. That was a great purchase. It's made, that's another thing that's really simplified my life. <laughs> Composting toilets are crap for nomadic life. Yes. I'm heading West. Um, I will be, I'm heading uh, South and then West and uh, expect to be I expect to be in Arizona by beginning of December and probably by uh, probably by Christmas I'll be in LA in the LA area. I don't know that I'll stick around there for too long, but then I'm going to I promised a friend that I would help her sell off her storage unit in uh, Chico, California. So I'm going to head up that way too. So I got a lot of lot of stops on the list cuz I haven't been able to travel that much, you know, I in the past few years. And I just want to kind of, there's so many places I want to go and see and all that. But the cool thing was my sister just moved to Arizona and as she was driving across the country, she would say, Oh, look, there she is right there. Are you stopping by to visit? She would send a picture of a place and I'd be like, I know exactly where that is, you know, and I don't feel like I know the countryside all that well, but I guess I know more than I think because, well, I guess if you're on route 40, I pretty much know route 40 pretty well, but there's a lot of places people will say, Oh, I've just come to this really interesting place. And I'd be like, I know I've been there. You know, I like to travel. I'm not like a, um, not like a sit in one place. You know, a lot of people like to do the 14 days and then the 14 days I get antsy before 14 days. I, I got to move again, typically. Um, and yes, I am going to the RTR, probably not the WRTR, but I will go to the RTR for sure. I have to go to the RTR. I have business at the RTR. Um, but uh, yes, so I'll be there. Um, yeah, it is good to be able to go everywhere. I like to go everywhere. Um, and I'm going to be going to Mexico probably mid-December for some dental work because that's where my dentist is, um, which will be interesting because I haven't, haven't ever gone to Mexico with the bus. I've been to Mexico plenty of times, but typically I park in, in the, on, in California and walk over. And this would be my first time really not, not my first, my first time driving into Mexico. I've driven into Mexico with other people. Um, but Chico has my fit. Hey, nomadic foodie. Did you, did you just appeared? have you been here all this time? Um, yeah. And I probably, you know, Zulma, of course I'll, uh, of course I'll come by Torrance. I can't, be in California, not go to Torrance. Um, oh, Assateague. Yeah. Um, I will be, it kind of depends right now. I'm dealing with some medical stuff. I have all these appointments scheduled and it depends when I get on the road, I'm going to, um, North Carolina and how long I take to get there and what, what I see on the way and where I, where I am able to stop is kind of dependent on when I actually get out of here. Um, because my plan is to leave here November 3rd, but I don't know that that's going to work out because they keep finding more things they want to take pictures of inside my body. <laughs> and I, I figured now is really, you know, I couldn't do any, when I was taking care of my mom, I couldn't really take care of myself too well because 
every time I made an appointment, um, you know, that something would happen with her. So uh, now's my time to kind of get all that stuff done. And my health care is here in Massachusetts. So I kind of have to do all that while the opportunity is in front of me. If I come to Torrance, yes, I would, I, I definitely will do, I would love to do a meetup in Torrance. I always do a meetup in Torrance, but usually I don't tell anybody. <laughs> I just meet up with people, you know? Oh yeah. R Reverend RV, maybe he will, maybe he'll let you do a little preacher number. Oh yeah, your soul caregiver. It's hard to be a caregiver. You trying to take care of yourself is not an easy thing, you know. And I never honestly imagined myself being in that role, but I'm really, I'm very glad that I was in a position in my life where I was free to do that. And it's definitely been one of the most valuable experiences that I have had. But it's not something I ever would have uh, expected of myself, you know, I, I, I felt like I was just kind of a loner and not really capable of taking care of anybody else. It turns out I am, which is great. Um, yeah, it's medical stuff is a pain in the ass. It really is. And then they keep giving me more things, you know, like, uh, yeah. The, and, and, I'm very lucky because I've said, look, I want to get out of town. And normally I can't get an appointment for like two months. And all of a sudden they're going, well, we have a cancellation tomorrow. And so I've just been back to back to back to back doing medical things, which is a, a bummer. Oh, poop alive. Well, you go off and go see King Calvin, the kissy cat. Um, and I will see you later. And uh, that's not me signing off. That's me saying goodbye to Hoop Alive. Everybody say goodbye to Hoop Alive. She's taking off. Um, yeah, it's important. Health is an important thing and it's really hard to do. You know, it's, it's just the last thing that anybody wants to think about. You know, I know certainly for me, it's the last thing I want to think about. But what, yeah, so I'll be heading West and, um, yeah, Gabrielle, I know you've been through it too. You took care of your mom too. Um, I still keep keep forgetting that she's not here sometimes, you know. It's it's hard to remember that my mom is gone. But, you know, it, this is something that happens. Everybody dies. And as much as I would like it to not be the case, it's the case, you know. And um, they say one door closes, another door opens. And, you know, the door is open for me to get back on the road right now, which is really... Uh, spectacular and that's i feel like that's um yeah nancy same nancy went through this too no my big project is not something it's a writing project i'm on a writing project right now and um i need to get it finished because i've been working on it for way too long um and it it's i'm excited about it but i need it to be done so i'm gonna keep plugging at that um Nobody gets so alive, that's for sure. Um, I think there's a word missing from that sentence, Joan. Anyway, you'll, I'm sure you'll, you'll correct. I don't know. Somehow I'm not getting that sentence. Anyway, um, yeah, what else? Anybody throw it at me. Um... Not that, not that I really know the answers to anything, but I did tell you that I would do, I would reveal my fun place to, to quote camp in Boston, my favorite place to, and again, I'm like very trepidatious about this because I don't want to give away my big secret, but it's, um, yeah, that didn't help at all, Joan. I still don't know what you're saying. <laughs> you need to get some spell, girl. Uh, but I guess I will tell, I told you, I would tell you, um, it's the zoo. That sounds weird, right? Um, the zoo in Stoneham, Massachusetts, which is near where my is living has a very big parking lot. And, uh, I try, I can't go there every night, but 
every uh, like once a week I park in that parking lot and it, there is one sign in the whole parking lot that says no parking, no, no overnight parking. But I didn't even see it the first night I stayed there. It's very, very faded and clearly no one cares. So when I parked there, the first time I parked there, I woke up to the sound of just an incredible menagerie of animals. Like everybody asking for their breakfast, you know, you'd hear um, orangutans and sounds, you know, sounds. And then I happened to notice when I got out to walk Captain, there was a sign there that said no swimming. And I thought, I'm in a parking lot. Who's going to swim? And there's a little path that you go down and you come out to this secluded side of a pond, you know, boat ramp where people rent boats and everything on the other side, but the side you're on, there's nothing. It's just walking around, walking around this pond and listening to these animals. And it's just a really cool place to stay. And that's me being stealth in my big ass bus. So, um, like I said, people are not that suspicious of a person. They don't think there's someone sleeping in there most of the, most of the time. They don't even realize there's a person in that vehicle most of the time. Um, and if they do, they don't bother me. So I haven't had any real issues um, other than it loves, which I'll make a video about. And that wasn't around here. Um, I did, though, one night have parking lot maintenance people at one of the Home Depots flashing their yellow lights in the back window. So is every, am I buffering for everybody or is that just... Just a Nancy thing. Ah, Nancy, you're always buffering. Um, wait, when you found out your mother died, this is why I was confused, because I kind of got what you were saying. You found out your mother died, and then you called your mother to tell her that she had... Oh, wow, you were in shock. The same age that I'm at. And hey, you could not possibly be closer to me. And you're buffering, too? Um, well, I think we're kind of nearing the end. This has been almost an hour of me just talking. Um, I tried to do this through uh, a different, uh, like a streaming, a different streaming service, but I screwed up how I set it up. And if I did it through that one, I would be able to invite some of you to actually be, you know, to hear your voices as opposed to just, uh, uh oh, I'm breaking up. I don't want to break up. Um, but anyway, I'm getting getting ready to go anyway, um, because this is enough talking. This is a thank you for making me feel so welcome because I am really nervous about doing this since I haven't done it for so long. And it was just great to have you guys here and sort of my my I mean, I'm sure there are a couple of new people in here, but mostly this is my you guys are my people that I always see. And that's great. Um I'm I just don't want you guys to feel like I'm bowing out entirely because I will be back and making more videos and I'll probably be back doing some more live streams too. I don't want to commit to like any kind of schedule about it or anything because you know, I, cause I just don't, that's the bottom line. But, um, I will be talking to you guys again soon. Thank you so much for being here. And that you guys gave me super, super chats. Thank you so much. That was, that's awesome. You are the best. I'll catch you next time. Bye.